Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Sunday, December the 2nd. Grade 1 action at Del Mar. It's the matriarch going a mile for fillies and mares. Get down with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com. Receive a 300% deposit match. Nice card at Del Mar on Sunday. Here's the field for the matriarch. Wow, this is a Real barn burner of a race, a full field, an evenly matched group running for $300,000. And you can access free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one excellent sunset. This horse was a private purchase prior to the Kathleen Crosby stakes at Del Mar on November the 5th. These connections did a great job. They were just a little bit unlucky. Yeah, like you say, the, the fact that she ran as well as she did there in that spot off of that private purchase, that was a giant effort. She actually finished first. She crossed the wire first anyway, and she was taken down via disqualification. Uh, look, I, I thought she ran quite well that day, but much better than I thought she would. But the tip off for anyone looking at that Catherine Crosby that day was how much money she took early on. And that money just stayed right there. You had to know she was a live chance. Uh, the concern I have coming in here, not only is she facing much better horses, but the horse that she was taken down and placed second behind uh, Escape Clause, she came back. And I understand the circumstances. It was a much longer race, so maybe you don't want to use that as the real barometer. But she only earned an 87 in her next start. So if Excellent Sunset, if she barely cracks a 90 buyer, simply put, I just think she's way up against it. This is a really salty group. I agree. This spot might be just a little bit too tough for Excellent Sunset, who has been very consistent since shipping to North America. She has finished first in three of four races. You mentioned the disqualification last time out. The number two, Valadorna, is a graded stakes winner on the dirt, but her two best buyer speed figures by far have come on turf, pairing up buyer tops in her last two races. Now, she's been close to the pace in both of her turf efforts, and I I think the best plan for Mike Smith might be to revert to the closing tactics that resulted in her big win on dirt, because if she chases Fahan Mura early, she could be in for a long afternoon. And I happen to think there's a number of other horses that want to be forwardly placed in this race. I know we'll touch on the pace projector here in a bit, but I think this thing could end up being a little bit more hot, a little bit more contested than maybe it just looks at face value. And I agree with you, Valadorna. I think she's going to have to come from a little bit farther back than she has in either of those two turf races. I like her, but again, I think this is kind of a tough spot. Let's take a look now at that time form U.S. pace projector. Fahan Moore is in the race. Fahan Moore is going to be making the lead because ever since she's adopted these tactics for Vladimir Serenade, out in Southern California, she's turned into a legitimately solid graded stakes type. I have two concerns though, Matt. One, last time out in the Goldakova, for Fahan Mura, she had a relatively easy lead and she was still run down by Vasilika, who she's going to have to face once again on Sunday. Two, she's gotten good on the rock hard, firm turf courses in Southern California and there's been a lot of rain this week. I wonder if she's going to be as effective on some yielding ground. Yeah, and unfortunately, we won't know until the race is run if it really compromises her chances. I know she encountered a little bit of softer ground when she was out here on the East Coast. You have one way back in her PPs where she ran on good going down at Gulfstream. That was back when she broke her maiden for $50,000 in a claiming level. But I look at Fahamura and say, I kind of feel like that Goldakova, if they could do it again, would they really just drop the hammer and try to open up by four or five as they have in so many other races and then say to Vasilika, come and run me down? I don't know if it would have made a difference. Vasilika might just be a better horse than this filly is. But at the same time, you got to respect her. If she's allowed to get out there and be sort of totally loose on the front end, she can get very brave. I'm not totally convinced that she's going to be able to just totally shake clear. I do agree with you, though. I think they're going to be more aggressive. She was a length and a half in front. You'd say she wasn't aggressive that day. Well, not for Fahan Mora. She could be four in front if they really let her fly. And maybe that's the plan, to let her go as fast as she can for as far as she can. But I am concerned about the ground. Mopatis is one of our favorites. She's a hard hitter. She tries every time. She returns to the turf. She's only raced once on the surface, and that resulted in a last place finish in the grade one gamely. It's apparent to me that she's a better horse on the dirt, and I wonder if Doug O'Neill in Redham Racing is really hoping for a downpour, and somehow, some way, it's very unlikely this race is washed off the turf. Yeah, maybe in a, in a way she's a de facto MTO in a race like this because, again, if there is just some sort of deluge of rain, maybe she'll end up being the one to take advantage. Look, we know what she is. She's that kind of hard hitter. She shows up. She runs her race. More often than not, it's not good enough against the best of the best. And you brought up that turf experiment last year or earlier this year, excuse me. It just didn't work. I don't see any reason why this race on Sunday will be any different. 
Kadura is one of three shipping west for the great trainer Chad Brown. She won the grade two Boston Spa two starts back, but Matt, she could not have had an easier time of it on the lead that day. They just allowed her to walk 24 48. She sprinted on home, and it was just a candy trip for her. In the first lady, she was in chase mode as the favorite, and it didn't work out. Well, she's not making the lead in here with Fahan Mora, and I think she might also be slightly more effective on firm ground. I think she's slightly dressed up off that big win two back. Yeah, I agree. And you're right. Time form U.S. had blue fractions internally in that Boston spa. And I think also it's one of those things. Take a look at the two and three start races back up at Saratoga and at Belmont. You look at some of the horses that she ran against. They're very, very talented horses. But Hawksmoor's clearly lost a little bit on her fastball. Indian Blessing is a nice filly that came over here from Europe. She's OK, though. And 55 three starts back. She's nice, but she's recently been kept for the majority anyway in New York bred company. That most recent run in the first lady, not only was she going into that a little bit on the dressed up side, but I think she was facing much more talented horses that time around. Obviously, we know what a Raven Beauty is capable of. And you see Dona Bruja, she'll, who she'll run into again here. There's just a part of me that is still not totally convinced that she's quite as good as she once was or as good as that run two starts back would suggest. Miss Bad Behavior is extremely consistent, but let's be honest. This is a very tough spot for a three-year-old filly making her first start against Elders, and she's been the beaten favorite in three out of her last four races against peers only competition. I thought she ran quite well in the Autumn Miss last time out. That seemed like a legitimate pace she was setting, and a good filly in Twinette was able to run her down, but she's stepping way up in class and she's another one that likes to be close and Fahan Mura might run her off her feet. Yeah, her best running style is when she's forwardly placed and you combine that with much tougher company and the fact that from a figure standpoint, she's on the light side. I like her. I think she's rock solid, but this is tough. Daddy is a legend, might have won that Valley View last time out. She was sneaking on through along the inside and then disaster. She bounced into the rail. She dropped the jockey. It just nothing went right for Daddy is a legend. She's a really nice, consistent uh, filly. Another three-year-old trying elders for the first time. George Weaver's got to be sick to his stomach, though. Shipping out to the West Coast and seeing a, the possibility of a wet turf course, it seems like Daddy is a legend needs firm. Yeah, it really does. She's that kind of filly. You go back to the Appalachian earlier this year and you go back to that Lake Placid. She caught softer or less than firm going. Those were probably two of her more disappointing efforts thus far. You're right. I thought she was well on her way to winning that Valley View until she ducked through the inner rail. Unfortunately, very similar to what we just spoke about with Ms. Bad Behavior. Just you look at it. This is a really, really tough group that she's going to be going against. And I just I'm not convinced that she's up to this par level right now. I think Insta Irma is a sleeper that can get a piece of this at a really nice price. She was third in the matriarch last year while having a little bit of trouble. And that was kind of her story when she first came into the Baltus barn. It would be one troubled trip after another. She's had a solid season in 2018, punctuated by that big victory at Kentucky Downs two starts back. And last time out at Keeneland, she missed the break and things just didn't work out for her. I think she's going to get some pace. I think she'll come with a good run. Not sure she's good enough to win it, but maybe she spices up things underneath. Yeah, maybe an underneath award is something that you can be taking a look at, specifically if you're playing a try or a super. You're right. Draw a line through that first lady. It was a disaster coming out of the gate. And it was a very determined effort for her to go and run down Valadorna two back. You always have to take the Kentucky Downs races with a grain of salt. But at the same time, she done some good things in Southern California throughout the majority of the year. To me, I like her underneath. Vasilika has just been on a sensational run. What a claim. They took the source for $40,000. She has won eight in a row now, and she overcame kind of a moderate pace to win the Goldakova last time out. I was a little concerned that she wouldn't be able to catch Fon Mura, the way that race shaped up on paper. But she continues to win. That was her first triple-digit buyer speed figure. And I don't see any reason why she's going to regress. She is very dangerous, especially with a fast pace on tap. You know, when you think of Jerry Hollendorfer, you think of all the big names recently, whether it's a songbird or some of these two year olds that he's got that Unique are rolling Bella. along. Unique Bella, shared belief going a few years back. This might be his most impressive training job. I mean, take a look at these three most recent runs. A graded stakes winner at a mile and an eighth, a mile and a quarter, and a flat mile. She was a $40,000 claimer at one point. She's won all over the place. Santa Anita, Del Mar, doesn't matter. I, you, look, I don't have anything to knock about her. She just shows up and runs her race. She's in career form. I think she's going to run a good race on, on Sunday afternoon. How's this for a sleeper? Mission Impassable, the daughter of the great Galileo. Time Form U.S., 
loved her last race. 126 time form US figure or so, chasing the extremely talented three-year-old Philly rushing fall, who was able to just waltz on an easy early lead. Mission Impassable loomed boldly, turning into the stretch. Rushing fall just a little bit too good. Now she's based in North America, second time here. It'll be interesting to see what we get. I think she might be able to be taken back a little bit more and make one run. Uh, this three-year-old Philly, she's run some good races. She's interesting in here, sneaky at what should be a square price. Look, you brought up the fact that she ran into Rushing Fall most recently. If Rushing Fall were in this race, I think she'd be one of the three-year-olds that people would seriously be looking at saying she can win. Uh, the fact that she didn't catch any pace to run at that day and she still came with that nice belated run. And that was her first start since the end of July. So she was inclined to possibly need one. Now she's here with Rudolph Brissett. I, I think she's interesting in here. Again, if you're going to take a three-year-old, I kind of feel like she's the one with the most upside. Doug O'Neill and Calumet Farm taking a chance with the homebred Luminoso, figuring to be one of the longer prices on the board, coming off of a non-winners of one other win at Santa Anita, best buyer speed figure of an 82. Uh, this filly looks tough to make on paper. Yeah, she's up against it. That most recent run where she won that N1X, the fields come back very, very weak. You've got a, a highest buyer coming out of that as a 76. Uh, I just think she's way in over her head. You could argue that Dona Bruja is a bit of an in and outer, but she did finish ahead of three of these last time out in the grade one first lady over good ground at Keeneland. Didn't really have a bad trip, sort of in between horses, altered course into the stretch, came with the run and just missed to a raving beauty who came back and ran really well in the Breeders' Cup. Dona Brua has got tactical speed. She can go to the front. That's not happening on Sunday. She can raid and finish as she did last time out. And she did some really good work over really wet turf courses in her native Argentina. I think she's a player. Yeah, I do too. Look, I, I've liked her ever since she came here. I understand people were disappointed with that Beverly D. You got to draw a line through that because she was slow out of the gate and she was ranker than rank at the back of the pack. She wants to be... I don't want to say she wants to be more forward, but she has a little bit more tactical ability than that. She doesn't have to come from 100 out of it. She can handle off going. The interesting thing for me with her in this spot, I think she's got a big chance. I do wonder if she's slightly better at a little bit longer, a mile and a 16th or a mile and an eighth. That doesn't mean that she can't win this race on Sunday at a mile. Chad's got to be disappointed with the post draw of his other two fillies, Uni and Rimska on the far outside. I love both of these fillies. I just wonder, worry about this post. Both of these fillies have overcome some physical problems to do some nice things. We'll start with Uni. All she's done is win three in a row, and she likes a lot of cut in the ground. But she only beat three horses last time out in that noble damsel. And you can poke some holes in that race. And as I made mention with Hawksmoor earlier when we spoke about one of the other fillies, uh, Hawksmoor is probably not what she was when she first came over here last year. And you brought it up. She only beat two other horses other than Hawksmoor. And you also look at it from the company that she's been keeping. She hasn't been facing really anything here in 2018 to write home about. But at the same time, I feel like she is sitting on a as big an effort as she's going to have. Like you say, if she catches less than firm going, so be it. The mile distance is right in her wheelhouse. The question now becomes what kind of trip is Rosario going to work out? Keep in mind, Rosario rode off limits to a victory in this race last year with a beautiful ride. You're going to need something similar to that if she's going to get it done. Formulator fact for Rimska and Chad, a recent one over the past six months for Chad Brown and Rimska. We'll throw the formulator fact up in a second. As for Rimska, I mean, boy, she likes cutting the ground. Past six months, older last out winner, second off the layoff, graded stake turf routes. Chad's winning three for 11, $6 ROI. Rimska likes cutting the ground. I thought she got a good strip and setup last time out in the Athenia. Arad Ortiz was able to save ground most of the way. She eased out in the upper stretch, and then Rimska just rolled by that field. I think New Money Honey, the runner-up's a little bit over the top right now. So she's stepping up in class. That same trip probably not available to her, but she's consistent and she kicks hard. Yeah, I was going to say, she got a big late turn of foot, and that's something that you're looking for in a race like this. You brought up the fact that she defeated New Money Honey, who I firmly believe is certainly seen better days in her past. I don't think she improved from a three-year-old form. And really, I have to be honest with you, if you're taking a horse like Rimska, you are banking on that Athenia being the race, because from a time form standpoint, that's really the only race on her page that is fast enough. From a buyer standpoint, I get it, she jumped up. But time form, that's the only race that she's really got. And if you don't believe that, I don't know that she has any real edge on this field. Pick time for the grade one matriarch. Vasilika is going to be real tough as she goes for nine in a row. We're going to try to take her down. You believe in Uni and Chad Brown. She could make it four in a row with a win here. And as you mentioned in your analysis, Chad Ships here does very well. 
Yeah, and you know, I just uh, there, to me there are so many similarities between Uni and last year's winner off limits, where you know what she had never been a world beater. She had always, you know, she was talented. She could get the job done, and then all of a sudden, in the Noble Damsel, I believe it was the exact same race that we had off limits running prior. She went out there and absolutely waxed the field, and I recognized it was a short field, and maybe they were over the top, but visually, to me, I couldn't ask for anything more. And, and again, I feel like the buyers might be a little bit on the light side for this filly, but I really think she might actually be faster than that. Time form US has her considerably quicker than what buyer would. I think she fits in here well. Really, it just boils down to what kind of trip she work out in here. Dona Bruja is my top selection in here. I like the way she finished in the first lady last time out. I like that she can sit in mid-pack and come with a run. I tend to agree with you, Matt, that maybe she needs a little bit more ground, but I think this pace will be fast and she'll come charging it late. Give me numbers. I'm, I'm going toward the outside, 13, 14, 9, and 11. I'm going 12, 14, 9, and 3 <laughs> in the Grade 1 Matriarch Sunday's Race of the Day. Be sure to play with a DRF Bets account. You won't be sorry when you sign up because you get a 300% deposit match at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Matriarch is 3.30 Pacific. Good luck.